Have you ever heard of a war where birds were the enemy? Yes, birds. Not just any birds, but emus. Large, flightless, and native to Australia. But let's rewind a bit. Picture this. It's the early 1930s. Post-World War I, Australia is seeing a wave of ex-soldiers returning home. Their promised land as a token of gratitude. And they start farming in the vast stretches of Western Australia. Things are looking up, right? Not quite. Mother Nature has a cruel sense of humor and decides to throw in a severe drought. As if that's not bad enough, enter the emus. Thousands of them, migrating to the farmlands in search of food and water. These feathered invaders are trampling fields and gobbling up the crops. The farmers, their dreams of a peaceful life turning into a nightmare, are now faced with an enemy they never expected. So, faced with thousands of emus threatening their livelihood, the farmers turned to their government for help. In response, the Australian government didn't send aid or relief. They sent soldiers. Yes, you heard that right. Soldiers armed to the teeth with machine guns were dispatched to tackle what was essentially an agricultural problem. Leading the charge was Major GPW Meredith, a seasoned military man who probably never anticipated leading a fight against birds. The mission seemed simple enough. Cull the emu population causing havoc on the farmlands. But the soldiers soon discovered that their feathered foes were not to be underestimated. Emus, you see, are not your average birds. They're fast, agile, and surprisingly resilient. Trying to hit them with machine guns proved to be like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. And then, there was the environment. The harsh, unforgiving Australian outback. It was hot, arid, and offered little in the way of cover. The soldiers were battling not just the emus, but the elements as well. When they did manage to get a shot off, the emus would scatter in all directions making it almost impossible to have a significant impact on their numbers. This wasn't a battle, it was more like a game of whack-a-mole but with birds instead of moles. Despite their best attempts, the soldier's mission was proving less than fruitful. The Great Emu War was turning into a comedy of errors, a far cry from the swift resolution the government had envisioned. As it turns out, Fighting emus is no easy task. The soldiers, armed to the teeth with machine guns and ready for battle, found themselves in a rather peculiar situation. You see, emus are not your average enemy. Agile, swift, and surprisingly resilient, these birds were not about to go down without a fight. Chasing down these feathered foes in the scorching heat was a task more daunting than anyone had anticipated. Picture this, seasoned soldiers, veterans of World War I on a wild goose chase, or should we say wild emu chase, in the arid Australian outback. The emus scattered at the sound of gunfire, making it nigh on impossible to make a significant dent in their population. When the dust settled and the smoke from the machine guns cleared, only a small number of emus had been dispatched. The great call was, in reality, not so great. The mission was deemed a failure, and the government found itself the butt of the joke. News of the operation spread far and wide and the public couldn't help but chuckle at the absurdity of it all. Soldiers with machine guns versus emus? It was the David and Goliath story of the century, albeit with a twist. The Great Emu War was over and the emus had won. The war ended but the emus and the farmers were still there. The emus, having weathered the onslaught, continued to roam the farmlands, while the farmers, despite the government's failed attempt, were left to grapple with the avian invaders. The aftermath of the operation was as unconventional as the war itself. The media, quick to sniff out a story, seized upon the unusual event. Newspapers were awash with headlines ridiculing the government's unsuccessful attempt to cull the emus. The operation, intended as a serious solution to a serious problem, quickly became the butt of nationwide jokes, leaving the government with egg on its face. In a bid to appease the disgruntled farmers and salvage their reputation, the government offered subsidies for ammunition. The farmers, it seemed, were better equipped to handle the emu menace themselves. The Great Emu War, a symbol of government inefficiency and the struggles faced by farmers, remains an intriguing, if somewhat humorous, part of Australia's history.